You never know the belt is there by looking at him. It's lost between his shirt and his pants, tucked away, hidden, pulled close, serving a dual purpose. You'd never know it's there unless he made it a point of showing you. And he does, often, a hand resting there as a reminder in public. And I, I obviously did not proofread my story. Um, um, a hint of what will happen in private. You have no idea how many other girls he makes a point of showing it to. But the reason you keep returning is that when you're with him, you don't care about the other girls. There could be hundreds, thousands even, as long as he looks at you the way he does when he unbuckles and unfurls the soft, worn brown leather, then coils the belt purposefully around his hand. You can let yourself believe he wears it just for you. This isn't the first belt that's been used to strike you. There was the boyfriend in college who had you bend over, skirt around your ankles, camera flashing and belt lashing against your skin before plunging his oversized cock into your unprepared ass. He was all flash and no finesse. Your lover is the opposite, or rather flash and finesse mixed together in a dizzying way with plenty of substance to back them up. He holds the belt like it belongs in his hand, like it's an extension of him. He tells you that he thinks about you every day when he loops it through his pants, when he touches the cool metal buckle. Alone in some room or another, never either of your bedrooms, your body reacts before you have time to consider its wisdom when you see him reaching for the buckle. After all, you know from experience that can mean anything. He's giving you his cock to suck. He's going to shackle your arms behind your back. He's going to pull your hair hard and slap your face until you cry. He's going to beat you until your skin is heated from the outside in. All of these are possibilities, and all of these bring you pleasure, but you hope it's the latter. The belt is able <coughs> to speak in ways that even the both of you, wordsmiths by trade, cannot always do. The belt is not a toy for foreplay, but a separate part of your sex life, one that may appear at any moment. Its, present lur its presence lurks while you casually sip your drinks at the bar, hidden but powerful, your fingers itching to stroke it, if only so they can be slapped away. You never know if he will bring it out, how he will use it, how much of the belt and himself he will give you. You try not to be greedy, but you hope it'll be a moment like this. You're sore from having his cock inside you, from him holding you down, from his hand crushing your neck. Sore in a good way, so you almost don't even miss the belt. Almost. You never have much time, can never stay overnight, have to steal hours out of other people's schedules to accommodate this affair, so you learn to take what you can get. You're wondering when he will have to leave, when the spell of lust will fade back into real life, when he reaches for the belt from the floor. Turn over, he tells you, and you roll onto your stomach, your pale pack backside before him. Your face is turned away from him, sunken into the softness of the pillow, fresh, freshly washed hair now tussled and messy. The tip of the belt rests against your newly shaved lips as you hear the words, spread your legs. You do, because you always do, because this is what your relationship is about. He orders, you obey, and you both like it like that. Your hands instinctively curl around the pillow, long nails digging into the cotton and feathers as you wait. The belt strikes the air and you shiver, feeling a breeze that may be a phantom one, or may be very, very real. The next sound you hear coincides with the strike of the belt on your cheeks, both of them, a slice that takes a moment to process before you say the words almost automatically, thank you. There's never a you're welcome, or rather, not a verbal one. It's implied by the next stinging strike, by the fact that you're deemed worthy at all. He doesn't talk then, is almost solemn, as you wait for it to be over, with equal parts dread and glee. But those kind of smacks aren't what make you come. No, that's safe for when he makes you cry. You turn over and open your eyes for a moment to look at him, hovering over you. You marvel that you can feel so close when he's not touching you with his body at all. The belt is capable of magic. You start to shiver once you realize what's going to happen, that the belt is not just teasing your lips with a kiss, though you pucker up when it approaches. Then the belt moves on to its real work, kissing your other set of lips harder, the equivalent of a shove-you-against-the-wall bruising kiss. This kiss is merely an introduction, a warm-up. You know what's coming, and even though you want it, you press your legs together involuntarily until he barks at you to put them back. You shut your eyes because you know you can't watch this. Your hands are twisted above your head, clinging to each other for some kinky version of safety. You focus on keeping your legs open, all of you exposed. 
When the belt strikes there, right there, you don't quite scream. It's more of a strangled, garbled cry. Your hand automatically goes to cover the sting to cradle yourself. You finally get a good girl. You try to turn, turn over to form into a ball, but you're not allowed, or rather, your desire to prove yourself wins out over your desire to stop what's coming. You didn't travel for hours just to shy away from the pain, but you almost forget that when the next strike blows. <coughs> you wonder how the tender skin between your legs can stand that force, and then you stop wondering when the belt moves upward to your breasts, your nipples no match for the blows. You arch your back and thrust upward, even though inside you want to cower. You reluctantly remember telling him you wanted bruises there, marks you could proudly reveal with a hint of cleavage, a well-timed reveal as you lean over on the train. You still want the marks, but breathe deep through your nose, twist your fingers more tightly around each other to get through them. You bite your lip as the sweet pain of the belt heats your chest and wanders downward. You almost get used to the rhythm, your nipples stubbornly rising after each blow. Okay. <laughs> 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 